We play and call it work. Hi there. Chris here with this week's Sit and Talk. For next week's Sit and Talk, ask your questions of Steve. If you have any questions, uh, leave them for at Steve. And of course, if it's anything in response to what I say today, it'll leave it at Chris, K-R-I-S, in case for anybody out there who doesn't know how to spell my name yet. <laughs> and so let's just dive right into the questions here. This one's from Bad. This has got three thumbs up. Chris, would you paint up a Tau army and fill Dave's office with Tau miniatures? Um, I probably wouldn't uh, because, uh, you know, painting that many Tau to fill up an entire office, whew, man, that's, that's a large undertaking. Assembly, painting, and, and, you know, I mean, like myself, I mean, I'd have to paint them to some sort of decent type tabletop standard and I, I just I don't have that kind of energy I don't have that kind of time I don't have that kind of energy and um, you know there's better ways to torture Dave than just fill his office uh, with uh, Tau miniatures so yeah Anubis 45 hi Chris how to magnetize models and what glue and size magnets do you need well that varies that varies quite a bit we do have a series uh, in our vault way back, you have to, you have to go searching through the vault. It's, um, magnetize, magnetize everything I think was the series was called. And we went through everything from like little Imperial guard, like, uh, swapping the hands, to the space Marines, dreadnoughts, vehicles and stuff like that. And so we go through, uh, the different, um, magnet sizes that you'll need, of course, with drill bits as well. Uh, whatever drill bits and of course magnets you're going to use, where to position them, how to go about, you know, making sure you keep polarities and stuff like that. Uh, as far as my, uh, as far as glues are concerned, typically we just use super glue. Uh, you could use, I suppose, like liquid epoxy, like a two-part liquid epoxy. That probably would give you a fairly strong bond, but it's not entirely necessary because it takes a while for it to set up. And I mean, if you have tons of time on your hands, sure, why not? Uh, it probably would give you a far more secure bond, but it's not entirely necessary, especially for our gaming needs and stuff like that. But yeah, I do show um, doing Imperial Guards models, Space Marines, and all the way up, and we do a whole bunch. Uh, but it was an older series way back when. Uh, it was something we could revisit again and do kind of a revised, you know, 2018 type version of it. Uh, I don't know if the people really want something like that, they, you know. Uh, there are lots of things uh, that, you know, like I would like to cover as far as like conversions and, you know, things like that. Uh, I think, you know, would be a lot of fun to uh, to go over and, you know, so it's possible. It's entirely possible. Uh, Mac Hawk. Oh, no, that's for Dave. Never mind. Uh, let's go. Dr. Williams 13. Chris, do you or any of the mini working week staff partake in various forms of campus? What are your thoughts about legalization? I, for one, think it is great. The legalization or the cannabis? Um, you know what? I've, to be honest, not since I was a young fella. Uh, legalization, sure. I mean, why not? And I mean, yeah, the, like there are pros and cons to legalizing. And you know, I th personally, I think you know, like with most things uh, that are deemed illegal, uh, they should be just legalized, and the government tax them, and you know, regulates it, and you know what I mean, and they get. They get their fundage and you know and it's it's because i've often found the problem is similar to like uh it's like alcohol with young people and stuff like that uh you know in europe uh, they have younger ages uh for drinking and such and whereas in canada north america uh you know it's much older you know like some like in some states it's 21 in canada it's 19 quebec it's 18 and uh, a much more relaxed attitude towards alcohol and um, you know you often have a, a much more relaxed attitude towards it uh, versus if you take on very strict stances on it and very harsh penalties and you know it often just ends up leading to um, more illegal type activities and so no I, I think it should be all legalized and I mean you know it's monitored and you know what I mean and so no it, it, it's there's nothing wrong with it it's from the ground i mean it's it's nature right so yeah but that's my stance anyway roughly kind of if i have a stance on it which i kind of don't because i don't care because i don't it's not something that concerns me in my daily life you know 
Plastic Monkey Chris, I just watched Dave Bunker blog and noticed there are some large walls there. I think it would be awesome if you painted some large murals on the walls and ceilings. You could try different techniques, anything from spray graffiti to classical interpretation of the Sistine Chapel with orcs. <laughs> that would actually be very fun, actually. Doing something along the lines of kind of Renaissance type style of work and just kind of, you know, going nuts like that. But, um... Dave has plans for uh, how everything's going to go, so uh, as far as me painting any ceilings or anything like that, that is not in the cards, um, but that's fine because that's I, I want to take my time and do proper work on that, and if I did any other side projects like that, um, you know, I mean, you wouldn't get quick tips out of me, so I mean, you know, you, you, you take your, you take your, your, your good and the bad with that, right, I mean, either I disappear for a month and you don't get no quick tips, and you know or uh, and get this really you know awesome looking ceiling which a majority of the public may never see so i mean you know like you know which one do you want kind of thing right so yeah i i don't i don't think so <laughs> Uh, Sergeant Safety, Chris, if Matt and Dave were the only people in the mini wargaming building and it was on fire, who would you save if you could only save one of them? Thanks for answering the question. Uh, I would save myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, the, if there was the three of us in the building and it's on fire, yeah, I'm getting out. <laughs> Plastic Monkey, hey Chris. We all know you would have a beautiful Elder Army if you ever collected and played with any other faction, 40k or any other game system. Would you ever consider something different in the future? And if so, what would be the reason for choosing it? How they play, the models, an idea for a paint scheme, lore, something else? Do you enjoy kit bashing stuff and modeling as much uh, as painting or is it all about the paint? Would you, for instance, make a scratched built Eldar super tank? Wow, there's actually a lot of questions in that. Um, would I ever consider playing something different in the future? Sure, like another, a different game system, why not? Uh, I mean, I still have like all my War Machine models. I played Merc in War Machine. Uh, I have uh, a Covenant of Antarctica fleet for dystopian wars. Um, I'm trying to think what else do I got around here. For Age of Sigma, well, Fantasy, I used to play Bretonians. I still have my Bretonians. Uh, I would love to see a version of Bretonians come back for Age of Sigma. I think that would be awesome. Uh, but as far as Age of Sigma, uh, like if I was to get into Age of Sigma, uh, I think it would be um, like the Dwarves, the Fire Slayers. Uh, they almost got me into it. I really like those models. Um, these new Dark Elves that are coming out, these Blood Elves or whatever they are, uh, they're very, very interesting. I'm going to have to see more of the models, see what they really kind of look like. And, uh, but I guess really to answer the question of whether or not it's the lore or it's the, the, how they play, I think really it is how, how the models look first and then possibly how they play. Um, you know, like for my Eldar, I've had Eldar since Rogue Trader. I've always liked the aesthetics of Eldar, and the way Eldar have played over the years has changed mostly, but they were always within this certain category of being um, maneuverable and heavy firepower, and I've always really liked that style of play. And everything else has just kind of been variations of that, whereas Space Marines are all kind of good at everything, whereas Eldar are like, you know, the glass cannon, right? It's, you know... You got you got to be careful with Eldar. You got to be strategic with your Eldar. Otherwise, you're just gonna get you know uh, whooped, right? So that, that's why I like Eldar. And I mean, for me, I like the aesthetics of Eldar over their lore, over their gameplay. So I like the I like the look of a model first. I like the aesthetics of how it looks on the tabletop and everything like that. And yeah, so yeah, for me, if if it was if it was something's gonna get me into say like Age of Sigmar. Uh, it'll most likely be something that's really cool looking. And, I mean, I, for, you know, for me, if they brought Bretonians back in Age of Sigmar and they, you know, they did something different and made them, you know, super duper, you know, um, storm, what are they, Stormcast Crusade or whatever the heck they're called. Stormcast? Stormcast, right? So anyway, if they made them more like that but on horseback or, you know, something different, Pegasus, like uh, the way they've been sculpting stuff and plastics and all this floating stuff and 
Man, it would just be awesome. I would, I would, I would just be instantly in love, and I'd probably get into Age of Sigmar, Age of Sigmar at that point. Um, but otherwise, you know, I see a lot of other game systems out there, and some of the models look really, really cool. You know, I see some that like, uh, like you know, I see like a lot on the Kickstarters, and they have really great sculpts. And but they're like for a board game, and it's like, man, you know. Uh, and then I see like Star Wars Legion. Star Wars Legion looks looks like a fantastic game. It might be a lot of fun to get into, but it's only three factions essentially, right? Whereas Warhammer 40K is like what 12, maybe more, you know, depending on if you make up your own stuff. And you know, like with the Star Wars Legion, I'm kind of like, well, it's Empire and it's Rebels and maybe Scum, and it's like, that's it. That's all you get, right? That's that's all you're getting. And you know, I don't know. It's there's only so many times that I can play the Battle of Hoth, you know, or the Battle on Endor, or you know what I mean? Like, there's only so many times I can play those fights. Uh, I think, realistically, what they should have done for that game is they should have um, gone to the Clone War era and had it the Clone Wars. That way it was Republic and uh, Separatist. But then you could have, like, all the different alien worlds that were sided with each side and all the different tech that they have. and You know what I mean? Like... Way more possibilities for factions and armies and, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Rather than, you know, having it post-Clone War kind of thing. And I don't know, I just, you know, I mean, I love me some Star Wars, but, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I'm sure that game's going to fly off the shelves. I'm sure it's a well-written game. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. But does it have that longevity to it? You know, I don't know. X-Wing seems to be doing well, and that's still just the same kind of thing, right? But X-Wing spaceships, it's a different kind of, you know, visual kind of concept, right? It's not little bonums running around on the ground, you know, uh, taking objectives, you know what I mean? Like, it's, X-Wing is all about the starships and, you know, stuff like that. It's all about that, you know, that fantasy element, you know what I mean? Like, in our brains and when we're kids. Uh, so, yeah. Um, do I enjoy kit bashing stuff? Um, when I need to. I'm actually, when I'm, I'm more of a convert when I need to kind of guy. I don't just simply grab stuff off the shelf and just start making something. I'm more of a painter than I am a maker. I mean, I don't even I don't even do that much sculpting. I only sculpt as I need to. I don't think of something go, "Ooh, I need to I need to sculpt that. I'll create that out of nothing and you know, cuz the guy the people who could do that, I mean, you know, fantastic. That's awesome, you know, cuz oh, man, I mean, I wish I paid more attention in sculpting class. <laughs> Because that would have been, you know, really fantastic. But, you know, what are you going to do, right? So, um, and would I have built a scratch built an Eldar super tank? Yeah, if I was a, more of a scratch builder, I mean, I've seen some examples out there. And there's, a, there's one fellow, I can't remember what his name is on the site. Uh, he, he built like this, it was like from an Eldar piece of artwork. And it was this big, super heavy flying craft. Awesome. And tons of detail. And you look through this guy's website and he's got like tons of conversion. Fantastic work. Not a lot's painted, but conversions and stuff of that, fantastic looking stuff, you know? And, you know, it's it's all about time and, you know, getting these kind of projects done and such, right? So, yeah. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Captain Snickdaka. Sir Chris, tell us the great story when you realized you were highly interested into painting and the arts. What did you do to become the master artist you are today? Um, well, to answer that second part, it's practice, 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 practice. You know, you get to Carnegie Hall, practice. So it's, it's a lot of that. And really, I mean, like I've been painting since I was a young fella, uh, since around like 88, I've been into this hobby painting and, you know, selling models and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, like I, I got steadily better as I was, you know, grabbing more and more information and I wish... I grew up in a time where we had the internet and I could just, you know, get whatever information I wanted right away. I had to look through white doors and painting magazines and this and that and, you know, listen to this guy's advice and, you know, go over here to this hobby shop and this is the way they're doing it. And, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, you know, just getting information all over the place. It was just, you know, you had to kind of trek to really kind of get your information. And it's not like the internet where you can just kind of type in, well, how do I do this? And, you know, it shows up on YouTube, right? And... It wasn't until, uh, you know, I started working for Mini Wargaming that I really kind of started concentrating on, um, you know, expanding my technique. I had already, I had already gone to school for a lot of art and stuff like that. And, 
you know, the color theory and, you know, all these different aspects uh, of fine art. And, you know, um, that was, uh, I've already had that kind of art background ever since I was a young kid. Even in high school and stuff, I always excelled in art. Um, and, you know, took it all the way to college. Um, but it wasn't until I, I, I started working for Mini Wargaming that I actually started really kind of concentrating on actual brush techniques and things like that. And that's when, you know, that really kind of st uh, started. And, and you can pretty much tell from like some of my earlier videos, uh, that's when you, when you see some of my earlier videos, that's pretty much how I was painting to that point uh, versus pretty much how I, can, how I paint today, which is pretty different from when I started. And that's like five, six years, I don't know. Been working for many working with since 2011, so we're at what 2018, so seven years going on, seven years. So yeah, seven years of producing videos daily will definitely, you know, it, that's definitely how you get your practice in. Uh, and you know, again, like I said, it, it it's all about practice. You want to get better at this at this hobby. You want to you know really kind of improve your skills. Practice, 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 practice. Practice, and then after you're done practicing, you practice some more. <laughs> um, Morgul at Chris, love your painting videos. Back in 2015, you made a video on how you painted the patterns on Dave's brass scorpion of corn. Could you make a video on how to make a similar effect without an airbrush? Yes, I could. Sure, why not? Um, you know. Sure, <laughs> I could do that. Uh, just, I, I, you know what, you're probably better off, I don't know if you're a vault member, you are a vault member. Um, just ask it in one of the quick tip videos and just post it as a question. Say, Chris, uh, I'd like to see how, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll, that gets logged into my quick tip list of quick tips. Because every time you guys leave comments uh, in the videos for all like the, for quick tips, I do log those away. There, I've got a big sheet of questions and so, you know, when you guys do ask your questions, I do log them down. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm one guy answering these questions. And so, you know, it takes a little while. And sometimes uh, some of the questions are a little bit quicker to answer. And some of them are a little bit longer to answer. And so I try to go for the little quicker ones because then I can be more efficient in my use of my time, uh, you know, at work, right? Because, I mean, a quick tip on how do I paint a space marine is not really a quick tip. That's more of like a, just a tutorial on, you know, how to paint a space marine. It's not like, well, how do I paint the eagle uh, on his guns and his chest, you know, or how do I paint the face of a space marine? That's more of a quick tip. That's more specific. And really, that's what quick tips really is meant to be, is something very specific, right? So bear that in mind. I mean, feel free to ask a question. How do you paint this kind of space marine? I'll get, it, I'll get to it eventually, you know. I, I have been doing some begin to ends. I mean, been working on Rodigus, and I mean, that's what, we've been doing that, what, two weeks now, almost three? And so, you know, why not, right? Uh, Digital Days at Chris. With the release of the Custodians, I find the color scheme too gaudy and boring with so much gold. How would you paint them and keep the royal theme? Thanks. Keep the royal theme. I think accents of gold, I think uh, if you want to keep with a royal theme, uh, I think doing them like uh, Roman Praetorians, where they have that blue purple in the main fields of their armor and then just the trim or just like, you know, high points and, you know, the details like the filigree and stuff like that get colored in gold and the rest of it is all, um, you know, that blue purple. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, and then do... Oh, uh, let's see, what color? If you're going to do like big power blades on the blades, I would kind of go with yellowy orange. Yeah, more yellow, but just the hints of orange in it, just so it doesn't feel all the way yellow. and kind of just go for that contrast. Uh, and then probably like maybe white cloaks. Yeah, white cloaks. I think would look really cool. I think that's right. If you do, send a, send a picture to Chris at Mini Wargaming. Send me, send me uh, what you're working on. Um, Malin, Chris, any recommendations for a product or method for doing a water effect on a base? I would like my model to emerging, uh, model is emerging from the depths and still has part of its lower body submerged in the water. For example, from the knee down in still water. Um, 
Yeah, there's a few products. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Woodland Scenics water effects. I, I think I'd rather just go and get clear resin. Uh, you can find clear resin in most like, big box uh, hobby stores, stuff like that, Hobby Lobby, that kind of thing, Michaels. Um, of course, uh, when I found mine, I found it at a home hardware, which is a hardware store, because it's often this uh, two-part uh, um, resin is often used for um, finishing uh, tabletops and countertops and stuff like that, right? Uh, they will often seal it with a clear resin and to build up a nice, you know, glass shine on the top. And so the, the, that's the kind of stuff I use. It's, uh, I think it's called Envirotex. And it's, you know, it's kind of pricey, uh, but I, it's so easy to use. It's, and mix it at one-to-one, -one, you pour it into the surface and, you know, uh, you just use a little bit of heat. You can blow on it with like a warm breath uh, to knock the bubbles out and everything like that and pff, you're done. And Envirotex, it's really easy to use. But you can go to some art supply places and they'll have lots of, you know, cheaper clear resins. But I'm a big fan of clear resins. But I mean, if you're gonna go absolutely on the cheap, I mean, you can use gloss varnish uh, you can also use like um, some gloss gels for creating like waves and stuff like that. You can also use a combination of the two with um, resins and gels and go that route as well. Um, again, you know, it's, it's really what, uh, what kind of effect you want. And I mean, as far as having the model submerged, you know, get yourself a razor saw or if you have a, like a, a small saw or whatever, and if you need to saw that guy down at one of the knees so that it looks like he's stepping through, you know what I mean? And so you just have like a little bit of water, you know what I mean? And you can have that model kind of popping out like that. Why not, right? So that's really one of the easiest ways to do that kind of effect. Is you just kind of saw off at a point, you know what I mean? Like if he was like chest high in the water, you know what I mean? You saw him off right here and you just put him in the base and you put the water effects all around him, put a little bit of rippling and stuff like that. And you know, bang, he looks like he's emerging from the water. Um, Mac Hawk at Chris, I have just gotten my first 112 size bus, scale 75 naughty gears, as a little painting project and to take a break from the painting marines. Any advice for working on this kind of paintwork when coming from 32 mil Warhammer? Uh, there's really no difference, you know, it's a surface is a surface, you know, clean the surface, you know, the resin kits, I think. And so you know, you know, you want to clean the the mold lines off. You want to uh, put them in a, a water bath with a little bit of uh, dish soap and just give them a little scrubbing with a toothbrush or whatever. Just get, make sure the model is nice and clean. Make sure those mold lines are all removed. Give it a light prime and just paint it and go about it however you like. Uh, if you got an airbrush, you can do some really kind of nice zenithal type effects, things like that, glow things. Um, but otherwise, treat it just like you would any other thing. Um, you know, I mean, like if you painted a Land Raider, you painted a bigger th surface than whatever that little bust is, right? So, you know, and, but, it, but the great thing is, is that this is a fantastic opportunity to do something a little bit different and take a break from, you know, the, the grind of, of, um, you know, uh, of doing like a bazillion space marines, right? And do a little bust and, you know, kill a character. And it also, if, if you're, um, you know, relatively inexperienced, it also allows the opportunity to try out different techniques and different blends and glazings and things like that because working from a, a larger surface oftentimes can be a bit easier than trying to do those kind of techs. But once you kind of start to master these techniques, they are scalable. And so you can, when you master something on a larger surface, you can transfer that to a smaller surface because those movements are pretty much the same when you're moving the bristles across the surface. You, you know, you're much more confident in, in how you control the paint and everything like that. But otherwise, no, there's, there's really no difference in working those things. Just treat them like you would any other larger figure. I mean, those busts are only about the same size as some monstrous creatures. So, you know, you don't go about treating them any different. Like a Space Marine Dreadnought, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's all relative, you know? Uh, Draco Wolf Lord. Chris, hello, love everything you do, but the quick tips, super helpful. Two questions. If you had to play an army other than Craftworld Elder, what would it be and why? Thanks so much to see you in the, uh, more battle reports, but I know you're super busy with everything else. Thanks so much. Um, what other army would I play? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind playing with like, um, going Crimson Fists or Imperial Fists, but Crimson Fists. I'd go Space Marines and I'd probably go Crimson Fists. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind doing something, or I, I have the, had these ideas of uh, making my own chapter with Primaris Marines. And I was thinking of, you know, doing more of a Primaris type 
strike force, you know? So, yeah. That's pretty much it. For as if we're talking 40k, which we are, I think, possibly. Uh, how long have I been yammering on here for? I think I'm getting close to time. No, and none of my stuff is displaying here. Why isn't none of my stuff displaying? That's awesome. This, I usually get a whole bunch of information here, saying, "Here, Chris, this is all the stuff we're doing." But I don't have any of that stuff popping up for me. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I see how much time we had. Hopefully that didn't ruin the video. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, I think we've got enough time for one more question. And then I think we have to head over to the vault to answer the rest. I think. Yeah, I think so. So, we are going to do one more. Smoke Striker. Smoke Striker. Smoke Striker 125. Chris. If you have painted smaller scale miniatures, 15 millimeters, six millimeter, and so on, what has been your general experience with such scales? Are there any unique difficulties or interesting techniques you've come up with while painting these smaller scale miniatures? I, I haven't touched uh, like, uh, like 15 mil. I don't think I've ever really played with 15 mil figures. Uh, six millimeters, uh, I used to play a lot of Epic. Uh, and Back in the day, it was just a base coat and just a little bit of shading, and that was it. Uh, but I, you know, I really wasn't that stressed about you know getting that kind of stuff done. Uh, larger vehicles like an Epic, like Land Raiders and stuff like that, I used to paint just do a base coat, just pick up the tracks, and just do a little bit of edge highlight, and that's it. Yeah, but I was tr you know try to pick out all the little details. Um, not, nothing like painting a full, fully rendered or realized. Space Marine in six mil, I'm, nothing like that. Nothing that, you know, anybody go, whoa, you know, like, that's really crazy. I wasn't, I wasn't that hardcore into the painting. I mean, the painting I, I, I love and I could do for hours all the time, but I still like the game a lot. You know, I'm, I'm like, on any particular day, you know, I'm probably like 51% painter and 49% uh, gamer. And then some days I'm probably 51 gamer and 49 painter. You know what I mean? It just all kind of depends on my mood and and also what other kind of things are going on. You know, sometimes sometimes I don't even want to paint and I just want to play. And sometimes I don't even want to play. I just want to paint or I just want to build and convert or I just you want to do something else. And you know what I mean? So like, yeah. Thankfully, I'm at a, a point where I can, you know, do those kind of things, make those kind of decisions, and, you know, have those kind of choices to make, right? So, um, but yeah, as far as, like, the really kind of odd scales and stuff, oh, wait, no, I did do some 15 mil, because I, I did a few of the um, uh, Team Yankee stuff for Josh. I did a couple of the helicopters. Just the helicopters? I think just the helicopters. And they were fun. You know, I didn't go hog wild on them. And I mean, like, when you're dealing with smaller scales of stuff, um, you know, larger details, especially when they're shrunken down like that, become very obscured and surfaces become smooth and you're better off with just the basic colors around things. And when you're trying to get too much into highlights and stuff like that, it ends up looking really weird. And especially if you go with techniques like dry brushing and stuff like that, it'll it kind of throws the sense of scale off. And I think with a lot of small stuff, you're better off with just a larger base coat and some small edge highlights, but try and pick out the details. So like if the, if the guy's holding a gun, paint his gun. If he's got like a different colored helmet, paint that different colored helmet, you know what I mean? But otherwise, you know, don't uh, worry too much about, you know, like the highlighting and the shading and, you know what I mean? Like, and getting all those transitions to occur because the surface is just too small. It's not big enough to, you know, get into those, all those kind of details. But anywho, uh, thank you, uh, Smoke Striker, for sending that question in. And uh, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I think we're gonna continue this on over at, at the vault, answer the rest of these questions. And of course, uh, for next week's video, uh, sit and talk. Uh, it is for Steve. So in the comments down below, if it's for Steve, have it at Steve. And of course, if it's in response to anything I said today, have it at Chris. And I will see you guys next time, which is probably like a month from now, I think, probably. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, happy wargaming. See you guys later.